the unit one 2019 paper two and let's do some sample questions here define each of the following terms fundamental versus realized niche so the fundamental niche is the range of conditions and resources a species can use to survive and reproduce under no interference by other species the realized niche is the part of the fundamental niche where an organism occupies often as a result of limiting factors present in its habitat. And describe two ways in which human activities may affect the stages of the water cycle. Hydroelectricity, deforestation, water pollution. Those are some ways how we can do that. When you cut down the trees, you're removing the major layers in the photosynthesis process, right? Also, deforestation can disrupt the water cycle by decreasing precipitation which can lead to changes in river flow and water volume in hydroelectricity which is changing stored gravitational energy of water to turn it into electrical energy you would have to dam rivers which stops the water and affects the function of the river upstream and downstream. One can increase the buildup of silt and sedimentation. In addition, it can, in addition, damming the rivers can result in less water being available to plants and animals, which are also the major removal of trees can also decrease the amount of transpiration that goes on in the environment and this does reduce the amount of water available in plants. Humans can also use toxic agrochemicals and this can pollute our surface water or seep into our aquifers or ground water contaminating them find the term biotic potential and the biotic potential is the maximum reproductive capacity of an organism under optimum environmental conditions explain how environmental resistance regulate population growth in natural ecosystems what is environmental resistance is the sum of the environmental limiting factors both biotic and abiotic which together acts to prevent the biotic potential of an organism from being realized here we would talk about the two types of environmental resistance density dependent and density independent factors and you would elaborate here on how they regulate the population growth State two human activities that may have a negative impact on mangrove ecosystems. Or when we pollute our coastal waters, yes, via oil spills, these can damage the mangroves by coating their roots. And when you coat their roots, they, that limits the respiration of these aquatic plants. Another factor, another activity is urban development areas near mangroves, you know, the establishment of hotels. They result in the destruction of the mangroves. State two ways how human beings adapt to their environment. We can acclimatize to a wide range of temperature and humidity, and that's largely attributed to our, our biological thermostat. Um, for example, when traveling high altitudes, our body adjusts so that our cells still receive sufficient oxygen. This is seen through the various feedback mechanisms in our body. Lastly, use an example from the Caribbean region to outline how population growth may lead to deforestation and species loss. And guys, believe you me, first country that came to my mind was Haiti. No discrimination, but Haiti is at the top when it comes on to population growth and deforestation. When it comes on to deforestation, Haiti wins by far. 
Haiti population is out of this world. It's actually 10.6 or 3. I don't remember. But it's in the 10 point something region that skyrocket. A lot of people to be living on the Hispaniola region there. And because of the growth of the population, you know, more people are prone to rely on the environment for agriculture, for building more homes to facilitate the population. And this leads to the deforestation. But guys, you don't have to work with me. You can definitely choose other Caribbean regions. You can choose your own country. I'll choose my own country. And we could elaborate on that to see how population growth in turn leads to deforestation and species loss. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll try to finish the respective papers. And thanks for supporting DOA Caribbean Education. Bye.